Hi, in this video, we're going to go ahead and show you how to set up your digital hall pass. The first thing you're going to want to do is make a copy of the sheet. So if you go ahead and click here right above the uh, video, it'll go ahead and ask you to make a copy. And when you make a copy, it'll open up a Google Sheet. And you'll see that you have four tabs here, Pass, Search, Reasons, and Roster. The first thing you're going to want to do is set up your roster. As you can see here, you have six periods set up for you. Now, most of you don't teach six periods, so if you need to delete one, go ahead and just delete that period. And if you go back to pass, you will see that that period doesn't even exist anymore. There's no third period. Let's put that back in. Uh, I already have a roster, so I will go ahead and paste that in. As you can see, I, I have my roster pasted now. A uh, nice thing about this is that when you get a new student, you can go ahead and just add the student into here, like so. Now, if you want to alphabetize it, it's very easy to do in Google Sheets, so you don't have to go through Aries again. But just go ahead and highlight the row, go to Data, sort the range, and you do want to select that it has a header. That's going to not sort the top. It's going to just sort all the names. And once you click Sort, you can see now all the names are in there, alphabetized. The next thing we want to look at is the reasons. Now, I've gone ahead and put in five of the uh, most common reasons in my class that people leave. Bathroom, GLC, library, locker, the office. But if you have another reason that you want to add in, you could go ahead and just type that in as well. And once again, as soon as you type it in, it will go ahead and show up as a reason here. The last thing we want to do is set up some triggers. Now, this might seem confusing to you, but it's easy. We'll walk you through it. What you're going to want to do is click on Tools and go down to Script Editor. Now, this is going to open up all the code that allows this to all work. Uh, after you open up the code, what you want to do is click on the clock here. That's going to open up all the triggers. We're going to want to add two triggers. The first trigger we're going to add is on Edit 2. So all I do is hit the Add Trigger button, click on On Edit 2, and you don't touch the other ones, but what you want to do is go down to the Event Type. Select that, and you're going to want to select On Edit. It's once again On Edit 2, On Event, On Edit. Save. This might pop up for you uh, if you're running for the first time. It's just going to verify that you want this thing to run. It's going to tie it to your account. Um, so just go ahead and allow that to work. It'll save. And you're going to want to run another one. So once again, go down to the Add Trigger. This time you're going to want to run the last one, Installable on Edit. Click that. Same reasons again, don't touch these middle two, event type on edit, and hit save. And that's it. Now you are good to go. Go ahead and close that out. And when you get to dependent, you're going to want to hit save. It might ask you to verify again and allow. Go ahead and do that. But once that's done, you could close the script, and you are now good to go. Now this was made for a teacher to go fast. So all you're gonna do is three clicks to get a student checked out. So you're gonna hit the uh, period, so we'll say first. As you can see here, the names are automatically populated. And as soon as you click that on, you can pick any name you want, and then you have the reason. Let's go to the library. Now as soon as the uh, reason is chosen, you can see that the time out and date is automatically put in. It's to streamline this so you're not having to write anything down. You're just putting in the reasons. And uh, you can keep going for as long as you want and change the period to whatever you want. So it's fourth period. You can see that drop down showed up. Pick anybody you want. And once again, you can see the time is going uh, automatically put in. Now, when they come back, all you're going to do is hit check in. As you can see, um, the time in 
is automatically put in and the total timeout is also put in. That's a quick calculation. Um, now I have it set up to where it highlights green when that happens and that's simply because uh, at the end of the period you could look quickly to see, hey, has everybody come back uh, in case you get sidetracked with phone calls or anything else, you could do a quick spot check to see if people have come in. The last thing we wanna show you is the search function. So I already have a sheet set up here. And uh, as you can see, I, I went ahead and uh, earlier today, filled out some, changed uh, different people, the reasons, but everybody's gone ahead and checked back in. Uh, so for the search, it's gonna work just like you check somebody out. You're gonna select a period and you're gonna select a student. And this, uh, when you do this, it's going to go ahead and show you all the times that a student has uh, checked out of your class. It's going to tell you the time they left, the reason they left, uh, and the total time that they've left. So Carla only left once, but if we go to somebody else, uh, this person left three times, so it adds up all the times to give us a total timeout. So this will go ahead and give you all the times that they leave. You could get a time or feeling for how long they have left your class for the semester, um, maybe a month, a week. Uh, it's just good information. Maybe you're noticing that they're leaving the same time. Maybe you're noticing they're leaving the same reason. Uh, it's just something more useful information for teachers. Uh, and that's it. Your digital hall pass is complete. Uh, anytime you need to make changes, just make changes to your roster and everything will work fine. Uh, hope this works out well for you. If you have any questions, Go ahead and uh, let me know. Thanks.